Hi class, so we'll move on to chapter 6. So clean, key learning objectives. Understand the calculation of contribution margin, contribution margin per unit, and understand contribution margin ratio. So this is very highly tested on the exam as well. Um, so we know that contribution margin is just our sales minus all of our variable expenses and um, per unit. So you're going to need to know how to do a total and a per unit basis. So if you have a total amount, you'll just divide it by the number of units that you're selling to get it on a per unit basis. And if you have it on a per unit basis, you just times it by the amount of units that you're producing to get a total amount. And so just looking at this problem, so we found that the contribution margin on the so sales minus all of our variable expenses was a contribution margin. So if we were to do a ratio, we would just have the numerator being the contribution margin divided by sales to get a ratio. So that's a 40% contribution margin. Um, sales minus variable expenses, yep. Contribution margin per unit. So contribution margin divided by the number of units, just like what I said. Contribution margin ratio, what we just did. Um, yeah, just if you don't if you don't really get this part, just keep practicing, and um, that will be very very helpful on the exam. Uh, use the equation method and formula method for calculating the levels of sales needed to achieve a desired profit, target profit, or break even point. And so they use an equation method or formula method. Really, it doesn't matter on the exam as long as you are able to get to the the final result and however you work out the problem is best for you and so for me my um, my preference is the formula method um, just because you can divide it by contribution margin per unit to get the sales units or contribution margin ratio to get the sales dollars and so sales price per unit is a dollar eighty contribution margin ratio is forty percent total fixed expenses is Two hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred. How many? How many units will Hartel have to sell um, next year in order to break even? And so, this is asking for units. So we would do sales units. So that would be, and they're not asking for a specific profit. It's just to break even. So we would do our fixed expenses over our contribution margin per unit. And so we know that our sales. Sales price is a dollar eighty, and then our contribution margin ratio. We don't we don't know our contribution margin, but we know the ratio, and so the ratio is forty percent. So we'll just times our sales price times it by our contribution margin ratio. So we know that our contribution margin that we're making is seventy two cents, and we can. Um, work backwards in order to find our variable expenses. So this one minus this one, we can solve. So it's just the plug figure. So sales price minus variable expenses equals our contribution margin of 40%. And so our formula says we need our our um, fixed expenses, which is 218,700, and we'll divide that by our contribution margin per unit. So per unit we're making 0.72. Oh, did we do that correctly? Yep. So we're gonna, and this is not a dollar amount, this is in units. So I can change that. Let's see if I can change that. Yep. So this is in units. So we need 303,750 units. So I have, what do we have here? Yep, so that is our correct answer. So we had to solve for um, contribution margin per unit at 0.72 and then we found the 303,750 units that we need to break even. So just if you want to just check this, um, you can, so we need this many units to break even. If you want to check this, you can take this amount of units times it by our sales price, times it, oh, times it by our variable expenses, and to get our contribution margin equals this minus this and then our fixed expenses was the two oh, sorry I'll put this in comma format right and then our fixed expenses were given so this is our sales 
minus variable, expenses, contribution margin, fixed expenses. Our fixed expenses were that 218,750. So this one minus this one. And as you can see, if we do this calculation, we will break even. And that, and that just is a confirmation that you did it correctly. So net operating income, we broke even. And so if we sell that many units, our fixed expenses will be covered. Okay, so moving on. So gain corporation contribution margin is 12% and a fixed monthly expenses are 84,000. The company sales for a month are, sorry, sales for a month are 738,000. What is the best estimate of the company's net operating income? Assume that fixed mon monthly expenses do not change. So this is a highly typical um, question on the exam, so you need to know how that contribution margin plays a role in your in your calculating. So it said, so we'll use our same formula, move it over here, and it said sales were 738,000 and fixed expenses were 84,000. Contribution margin ratio was 12% and they're asking for this net operating income. So how do we find all these blank spaces? So we'll take again our contribution margin ratio, that'll give us our contribution margin in total. So if you want this in a comma. So and then so we have our contribution margin. We underline this or underline it. So we know that's our total. We'll just work backwards. So this one minus this. So seven hundred and thirty eight thousand minus six hundred and forty nine thousand four forty. We just plug that number to get our contribution margin ratio, or sorry, not ratio, contribution margin. And then our fixed expenses, what will be our net operating income? Contribution margin minus fixed expenses, 4,560. And I actually, I actually think this is the exact question you'll see on your exam. And then there's other ones that are similar. So look at, look at you, you already have four points on the exam if you can do this this problem. So these these questions are very beneficial for you to perform by yourself or to do by yourself. So yep, that's the correct answer. So we would select D on that question. Continuing on, calculation and significance of the margin of safety. So you're going to need to know the margin of safety and the margin of safety percentage, both of those. So make sure you know the formula and know how to calculate it. So total sales minus break-even sales. This is a dollar amount that sales can decline before losses are incurred. And then the margin of safety percentage, margin of safety in dollars divided by total sales. Margin of safety in dollars divided by total sales. Margin of safety is a measure of risk. The smaller the margin of safety, the more vulnerable a company is to a downturn in sales. And so, just for an example, let's see. So our break-even sales would be uh, fixed expenses divided by our contribution margin per unit. So we need to do on a per unit basis. And then does this one tell us how many units we're making? Oh no, this one doesn't tell. Okay, so we'll have to do another problem for that one. We'll move on to 6.4. So the degree of operating leverage. Degree of oper operating leverage is contribution margin divided by net operating income. This shows the relationship between of variable expenses to fixed expenses. So you have, if you have higher fixed expenses, you have a higher degree of operating leverage. So for a given level of sales, when the sale activity changes, so does the degree of operating level leverage. So the given level of sales. And so this, this means that more sales we have, um, the more and times it by our degree of operating leverage, the more likely our net operating income will change. So, yep. And so, the higher the degree of our operating leverage, the faster our net operating income will change with the increase or decrease in sales. So, that's the key point here the faster our net operating income will change because of this. And that will be it for this video.